Hey guys, this is Ksenia with the Ann Arbor District Library coming to you from my kitchen. And here's my obligatory excuse the mess statement, so please excuse the mess. But I have five recipes for Play-Doh for you that you may very well be able to make using the stuff that you can find in your kitchen and basically other parts of your house. But let's get started. This first recipe calls for frosting and confectioner sugar, powdered sugar. And for this recipe, all you will need is one part frosting to about two and a half, three times powdered sugar. So I'm just gonna measure out one fourth cup of frosting and scoop it right into this bowl. It doesn't have to be a microwave safe bowl or anything like that, it's just metal. Um, you don't have to heat this recipe, you don't have to cook anything uh, to get the consistency that you want for this particular recipe. So there's a quarter cup of frosting in my bowl. Next I'm going to put in again about two and a half, three times um, powdered sugar. So if I have a quarter cup of frosting, that means I'm going to have about half a cup, two-thirds powdered sugar, and so just get right in there. And then you just mix, you literally just mix it until you get the consistency that you want. It should be pretty moldable, um, it shouldn't be crumbly, so as you're mixing, it might get a little bit difficult to do so, or to continue to do so with a silicon paddle or with whatever utensil that you choose to use, and oh my god, that smells amazing. But refrain from eating it for now, and continue to mix. Once it becomes too cumbersome to mix with your, with your uh, utensil, just use your hands. Um, the nice thing about this recipe is that it is non-toxic. It is completely edible. It's just powdered sugar, frosting, and whatever food coloring you would like to add. So let's just say you're you're kneading the dough, you're working it, and you're finding that it's kind of sticky because you maybe erred on the side of you know using two and a half parts of of powdered sugar to the one part of frosting. Just sprinkle in some more into the bowl as you see fit. Um, you don't have to add a whole lot at a time. And treat treat the uh, work surface as though you're working out some, uh, some bread dough. Just flour it with some sugar and continue to work it until it reaches the desired consistency, which is, how do I describe this? It's like, it's like a really forgiving marshmallow. It's a pretty good way to put it. A forgiving marshmallow, kind of dry. Um, on the outside, your hand should not stick to it at all, and it should hold its shape when squeezed and molded, which it does. Fantastic. And at this point, if you want to add some spice to your life, to your, your Play-Doh life, um, up your Play-Doh game, so to speak, this is the point at which once the sugar and the frosting is all incorporated and is a homogenous mass of fun, um, Take a few drops of food coloring. This is just, oh, this is just some that I've made myself. Um, that's why it's in a, this sort of suspicious looking apothecary bottle. And you do five, six, seven, eight, nine drops into the center of your little dough form. And incorporate, incorporate, incorporate. And at this point, you're probably gonna find that it's gonna get stickier but that's okay, just drop it more into that, into some more um, powdered sugar, and that'll soak that stuff right up. And then it'll be, it'll, it'll uh, retain that nice, dry, forgiving marshmallow consistency that we kind of, that we want. Um, so continue to work the, uh, the food coloring through 
because I mean this looks kind of cool it's like all marbled and stuff anyway you probably want a more consistent color so keep working on it for another few more minutes here I do have a helper today this is Fritter he says hello um, or he would if he wasn't distracted by the mounds of powdered sugar and frosting all around the kitchen um, his great talent is eating and providing comic relief on most days you know being around this much edible play-doh was was a bit too much for fritter he needed to go back to his house he is very good as i mentioned at knowing what things are edible and what things are not and you know, I didn't want him to eat his weight in frosting. So he's nice and safe in his little house and he has a treat, nice healthy treat. It's great. This is not a healthy treat, but it is edible, however. So another fun thing you can do with this after you've gotten the consistency you've, um, you wanted, apart from, you know, breaking this uh, recipe up into however many uh, sections you want, however many colors you want, you can double it, you can triple it. So after all that is said and done and you have your your massive amount of moldable edible frosting dough this is very relaxing by the way you can um you just decorate whatever whatever uh whatever thing you've been stress baking and it may be a cake it may be a pie it may be a little cupcake but this actually behaves a little bit like i mean it, it is frosting but it behaves like icing after you infuse it with icing sugar. So I just rolled some out in my hand right now. I have nothing, no residue on it, and now I have this fun shape. See? Haha! -ha, shapes! After all is said and done, you've got all your colors, you got your treasure trove of, of s potential sculptures just waiting to happen. Put it in a Ziploc bag or an airtight container. Um, if you've used the entire can of frosting, because I don't know when I'm going to use my frosting ever again, except to make this Play-Doh. Uh, you can put it back in the container. It has a pretty nice seal on it. Uh, you can keep it in the fridge if you want. Just know that it will harden in the fridge, and it'll take a few minutes of warming up between your hands for it to be moldable. I've kept uh, another batch that I've made out on the counter in a sealed container, and it's, it's kept just fine for the last three days. If you want to make it last longer, um, I have stored mine in the fridge for upwards of a month. I don't have anything beyond a month at the moment, um, or much beyond a month. And happy, happy sculpting, happy cake decorating, whatever it is you decide to do with it, please show me. I'm super excited for what you get to do with this. Next in our recipe lineup is shaving cream foam dough. This behaves a little bit more like moon sand, and the reason I put this after the frosting dough is because it's not really more or less involved in um, in the making of it, but the mess potential is quite a bit larger, I think, um, when you're making this dough. So because it behaves like moon sand, it tends to crumble a bit more, and there's just there's a little bit more involved in the cleanup. So for this recipe, all you need is shaving cream. I just have the original Barbasol. Um, it's really fluffy. I have not yet tried this with like a shaving gel, but um, I think the proportions will be different with the shaving gel because the gel is so much more dense. So for this recipe, you will need equal parts, cornstarch, and shaving cream. And again, for reference, I'm using a quarter cup measuring container. And with the shaving cream, it's very difficult to be precise, so I will Occasionally eyeball it. <laughs> Out. That was fun. And I immediately go to using my hands because I'm able to gauge the um, consistency and the uniformity of the mixture or its lack of uniformity much more easily than when I use a spoon or any kind of um, utensil for this particular dough. And I will continue to mix this until it becomes really silky. You may find as you're working this dough that you may want to add a little bit more, um, more shaving cream. 
um, because mine was a little bit dry when I did the exact one-to-one -one ratio because the shaving cream is so airy. But this recipe is incredibly forgiving. Uh, the most important part is that you have the ingredients and you start off with a one-to-one -one ratio, after which you thoroughly mix and you will create something that resembles moon sand. It's really, it's not the best for um, fine grain detail or anything like that. Like you're not gonna make a, uh, a copy of the Venus de Milo with this stuff, but it's really good for little hands to press into molds. So once you have your, your nice little, it's, it should be really silky, this silky um, ball of dough. This is just a small, a small portion that I made. I'm gonna pull out your super snazzy food coloring again, if you want to dye it, and just work the color through the um, the amount of dough that you would like dyed for um, for playtime, and continue to work the dough throughout the bowl. I like this recipe a lot because you can adjust it as you go for um, color vibrancy for the moisture content and for the um, desired consistency that you want because you could just leave it really sandy and it'll it'll work just like a nice little um, sensory bin play sand or you could spike it with a little bit more um, more moisture from the shaving cream and that'll give you a more um, more workable kind of medium. So I'll show you the final product here in just a minute. All right, so I have worked the food coloring through my foam dough ball. It just takes a, a few minutes here. Don't want to bore you with all the details. But as you can see, here's my ball of dough. It's not leaving a whole lot of residue on my hands. The stuff that is on there isn't going to be very difficult to get off. It just kind of flakes off very easily. That's the consistency that you want. Um, not sticky, but not entirely sandy if you want to use this to um, press into things and to sculpt things um, with. So, as you can see, once I pinch it, it might crack a little bit, but that's the consistency that you really would, um, that you're really going to get with this particular dough. It's not going to be as smooth as the frosting dough, it's not going to hold detail as well as the frosting dough. But it will make for a good, um, a good medium for a mold, for instance. All right, next up in order of difficulty and involvement to make dough with stuff that is probably in your kitchen already is marshmallow dough. Um, at any given time, I have one unopened bag of marshmallows in my kitchen somewhere, just for you know emergency s'mores. It happens. So I have just regular Aldi brand large marshmallows and we're again going to need cornstarch and this time we will also use coconut oil. So marshmallows, cornstarch, and coconut oil and you may notice I have a different bowl this time. It is microwave safe because we're going to be using this contraption up here. So proportions. I have seven of these marshmallows in my um, heat safe bowl and I'm putting in two teaspoons of coconut oil on top of them. We are going to microwave these marshmallows on high for 15 seconds, check to see how they're doing, and then if they're not puffed up enough and melted enough, another 15 seconds. Look at how puffy they're getting. All right, so 30 seconds later, and I'm mixing molten marshmallows in this heat safe bowl. 30 seconds is plenty, by the way. And the reason I'm using a fork is because melted marshmallows function like melted cheese. It is, they are very hot and the fact that they're sticky makes it even worse. But as soon as I can handle them with my hands, I will switch to incorporating the coconut oil that way. It's just a lot easier um, to use, again, my hands because I can tell when the mixture is uh, pretty homogenous. Next, 
three tablespoons of cornstarch. Just dump it right into the bowl. And I like to add it one tablespoon at a time because that way I can tell if the mixture is getting much too dry. So you want a little bit of shine to this particular concoction, um, but you don't want it to be sticky. And this will function kind of like a really firm slime, if you guys ever made slime before. Um, with glue and all that, it's just way less messy. If you get it in your hair, um, cleanup is, is much simpler. I don't say that from experience, I promise. So I've so far added um, one tablespoon of cornstarch and it's still kind of oily and sticky. So I'm going to add one more. Let's see how it does. I found that if I add in the three tablespoons at once, um, I get a lot of clumps, um, just really hardened clumps of cornstarch that I can't get out later and it's not really fun to play with. Um, if, you know, it's full of these weird little nuggets of uh, trapped starch. And if you've ever pulled taffy before, if you've ever experienced that delight, find that mixing this particular Play-Doh in such a way that resembles a taffy puller is helpful. And you can tell that it's still, still sticking to my hand. So I'm going to dust it in whatever cornstarch is left in the bowl. And I'm going to finally incorporate my last tablespoon of cornstarch into this mixture. I don't like doubling or tripling this recipe. I just do it one batch at a time. Um, first of all, because mixing over a dozen um, melted marshmallows is the stuff that nightmares are made out of. Um, it's very hard and it's just easier to work in smaller batches like this. Great, so this is no longer sticking to my hands when I pull it apart. Um, when I stretch it out, it shouldn't it shouldn't just uh, cling on to my hands. Um, it should feel silky again. And at this point, I'm gonna add my blue food coloring. And I still have some cornstarch left in the bowl, just a dusting on the bottom. That's gonna be important for the next part because when you introduce liquid into this mixture, it's gonna make it stickier. And uh, you want a nice forgiving surface on which to work your dough. And persistence is key. As with all these other recipes, in incorporating your food coloring in a way that will make the, uh, the dough a nice, beautiful, uniform, Blue. All right, so I've incorporated my food coloring into this little ball of dough, which is going to be great for making very simple shapes. It doesn't hold detail well, but if all you have is cornstarch, some oil, and marshmallows, um, you're going to be good to go in making this particular kind of kind of dough. Um, it doesn't dry out very easily just because there's so much cornstarch in it, but I'd recommend to keep it clean preserve it for uh, for a longer period of time. Just stick it in an airtight container and put it in the fridge. You can also use different kinds of oil for this dough. I just use coconut oil because that's what I had in the kitchen and this is all about using what you have at hand. You can use vegetable oil, um, mineral oil, baby oil. Um, keep in mind though that everything that you're putting into it may make it inedible. And while cornstarch isn't delicious, it's still it's still digestible. Um, again, you can even use this to decorate cakes. I've done that in the past. It's not really like a fondant, um, like a, a traditional frosting fondant that you might find, but it does behave like a nice stretchy marshmallow fondant. So have fun with this. Decorate all of your stress baking projects. Again, use it as a stress ball or, you know, make stuff with it. All right, on to the fourth of the five Play-Doh recipes. This one's my favorite because it behaves just like Play-Doh and I think it even smells a little bit like the Play-Doh that you find in you know, regular plastic containers. For this, you will need just regular all-purpose flour. I have cake flour because 
that's all I have in my cabinet, but this worked just fine. Salt, just regular old salt. Cream of tartar. Coconut oil or any other kind of oil that you may have. Again, mineral you know, oil, baby oil, um, vegetable oil. Food coloring and boiling water. So proportions. I'm gonna just give you precise measurements uh, for the sake of precision and you can double or triple this recipe as you see fit. Three quarters cup of plain all-purpose flour or in my case, swan's down cake flour. A quarter cup of salt. A tablespoon of cream of tartar. Half a tablespoon of coconut oil and half a cup of boiling water. Now I just boiled my water in a tea kettle on um, over there on my other counter. You don't have to microwave this, you don't have to cook it or anything like that, you don't have to make it on the stove. Um, I just found it a lot easier to boil the water beforehand. Pour it into my um, half cup measurement measuring cup and then dripping the uh, food coloring directly into the water. So I have my dry ingredients here. I'm just gonna incorporate them and then add the water here in a sec. All right, so water has been added. I am mixing with a fork, and as you can tell, it's pretty goopy and um, consistent. Once this mixture cools down enough, you can go to using your hands. Uh, if it starts, if it's still sticking to your hands a little bit, this is pretty soft. It's kind of, um, I don't know, oozy in a way. I might add a little bit more flour to it just to make it easier to work with. Don't add too much because it'll dry out very quickly. Uh, but the process of mixing this thing with your hands is going to help remove some of the moisture in the dough. So as soon as you have, there's no better comparison than actual Play-Doh. As soon as you have the consistency of Play-Doh in your hands, you're all done mixing it. So keep working it for several minutes and if you feel that this is too sticky and you don't want any residue being left on your hands while you're mixing this um, when you go to play with it then just sprinkle in a little bit of flour and it should work just fine but again before you add in a whole bunch of extra flour mix it for about three minutes or so in your hand just actively um, keep incorporating, keep folding, keep stretching. That way you don't add too much flour on accident and it becomes kind of a big crumbly mess. All right, I have my nice, wonderful lump of blue Play-Doh. It behaves just like Play-Doh. You can do anything with this that you do with Play-Doh. Those weird little pasta extruders that give your plastic toys like Play-Doh hair, I don't know if that's a thing anymore. You knew that, go crazy. This holds detail pretty well. Um, this also keeps very well, especially in the fridge, because there is water in it. You wanna uh, preserve its freshness by putting it into an airtight container and storing it somewhere nice, dark, and cool, like your refrigerator. This will dry out in the air, so if your kiddo wants to make something to um, have for years after this, then um, you don't have to bake it or anything, it'll just dry on its own. And now, on to number five, the fifth Play-Doh recipe. All right, so this really isn't a Play-Doh, it's more of a, um, a polymer clay. And I really like this recipe a lot because it holds details very well. I've made beads and jewelry with it before, sculptures, little things like that, toys. Um, you don't have to bake it in order to dry it, so you can just let it air dry, and it doesn't degrade or shrink over time like salt dough might. So for this, you will need three quarters cup of just regular school glue, one full cup of cornstarch, two tablespoons of either Vaseline, mineral oil, or baby oil, and then one tablespoon of either lemon juice or vinegar. 
both of those have worked just fine for me in the past and um, depending on what you have available have at it you can use either one uh, what matters is that we have something acidic in there to prevent bacterial growth from uh, taking hold I've put in all of my ingredients sorry I have Vaseline on my hands now all of my ingredients into a non-stick pot um, cornstarch first and then glue because putting glue in uh, or putting cornstarch in a measuring cup after you use that measuring cup for glue is pretty hard so I just put in um, my cornstarch my glue and I'm putting it over low heat I added in the Vaseline and in my case I just used regular cleaning vinegar and I'm going to keep this pot on very low heat, stirring almost constantly and vigorously. And your arm may get tired, but that is all right. Um, you want to keep this mixture going. If it starts to harden and seizing up, um, you kind of lost it, unfortunately. So that's why it's very important to, throughout this entire mixing process, just keep on moving this mixture around. And it's going to start resembling kind of like really lumpy mashed potatoes. Getting my mixture to the desired consistency of lumpy mashed potatoes, um, and this is the only time you'll ever want that consistency from anything, it took about a minute and a half and at this point I'm going to turn off the flame and continue to mix with this silicon paddle that I have. You can also use a wooden spoon but any non-stick utensil is going to work very well. So I'm going to continue to mix this until it cools and I can handle it with my hands. And I, for this step I have taken it off the flame and have taken it off the stove actually because my stove has um, iron grates on it and it retains heat really well so I, I want to stop the cooking as fast as possible and continuing to mix my arm is getting tired continuing to mix as this mixture cools uh, allows for much faster cooling so continue to just keep moving it around for another three four minutes or so once the mixture has cooled sufficiently, but isn't entirely cold, I like to grab it while it's still relatively warm. Scoop it out of your pot and start kneading it with your hands. Something that is very helpful in uh, preventing it from sticking to your hands is getting more of that mineral oil, baby oil, or Vaseline, rubbing your hands in it, and beginning to knead the dough, which is, as you can hopefully tell, pretty lumpy right now. Begin to knead it, and you will be kneading it for about three to five minutes actively until all the lumps are worked out, adding oil or Vaseline as needed. At this point, while you're working out the lumps from your, um, your handful of polymer clay, you can choose to add food coloring to it, or, like I did with this one, or you can continue to work it until it's smooth and actually paint over it once it's dry, which is the preferred method of those who use it in jewelry making or ornament creations, that sort of thing. So you don't have to limit yourself to um, one mass of color in a batch of dough. So I've kneaded my dough um, actively for about five, six minutes now. And as you can see, it's smooth, um, apart from where I've just folded it. It's smooth, it holds its shape very well, even if I pinch it really thin. And it will, let me see if I can get something to um, press into. Meat breaker upper, why not? As you can see, I've made a deep, relatively sharp indentation and it holds its shape very well and that's how it will dry. It won't shrink, it won't expand, um, leave it out on the counter and it will dry within three days or so. Um, afterward you can paint it and 
do with it what you will. Um, another fun project with this is breaking off pieces and rolling it up into uh, little little balls, poking a hole through the center with a skewer and letting them dry that way and you have yourself a bead or very many beads. So have fun with all those recipes and let us know what you make with them. Whether it's decorations for cake, for um, when you stress bake an entire, you know, an entire white cake or what have you, that would be fun. Or if you just want to share all the fun colors that you've made with all the clay that you have created, that would be great. So troubleshooting, uh, the first recipe just has um, frosting and powdered sugar in it. If it's feeling too sticky, keep adding powdered sugar. Just do a, a light dusting on whatever work surface you're working on and incorporate it into your dough evenly and it should be just fine. That that dough um, doesn't really dry out so you, if you make something out of it it's not going to um, it's not going to keep if you squish it. So it's just a, a one and done kind of thing um, or you, you can repackage it, play with it again. Again that's safe, uh, safe to put in your mouth, eat, use those cake decorations, whatever you want to do. The second one, um, shaving cream and cornstarch might be a little bit harder depending on what kind of shaving cream you use. If you use a gel, you're going to want to use um, a more exact one-to-one -one ratio of shaving cream to cornstarch. The stuff that I use is really fluffy, so I ended up using more like one and a half to two parts of shaving cream to one part cornstarch. And what's helped me with that, uh, with mixing it, is actually getting the, the mass, the sand, um, into my fist and squeezing it so that all the, the, uh, the stuff, the sand, the cornstarch, the shaving cream gets squeezed out. You're basically working all of the air out of the, um, the shaving cream as you're doing that. The marshmallow recipe is really easy, self-explanatory. Um, I would just say that expect, once you add food coloring to the marshmallow play-doh, that it's going to become stickier. That's okay. Um, just use some cornstarch. Again, that stuff is edible too, and it doesn't hold its shape very well, but it's really good to play with, and it smells fabulous. Then the uh, fourth, fourth, I can count. The fourth Play-Doh is pretty much like the Play-Doh that you would get in the store. Um, troubleshooting with that, work it for a while before you add a whole lot more um, flour to it because just actively working it and um, exposing it to the air with your hands is going to um, help dry it out quite a bit. And again, you can just treat it like, like bread dough, you know, slap it onto a floured surface and fold it, knead it, punch it with your hands. Um, and it should, it should work just fine. And that'll keep very well in the fridge um, in an airtight container. And that will dry out if you just leave it out, which is nice if you want a keepsake of some sort. Uh, but it will shrink and degrade a little bit as it dries. So just keep that in mind. If you want to keep it for playtime later on, plastic bag, sealed container, fridge, and it'll be good to go a month from now. And the fifth dough recipe that we had was a polymer clay. That's the most involved one. Again, you can use for the um, the acid either lemon juice or um, vinegar, cleaning vinegar. I haven't tried stuff like white wine vinegar or rice vinegar. It would That would work too. Um, it might smell a little bit funny, but that would work. Anything really mildly acidic like that would be fine. And with that, you just really need to watch as you're cooking it over the low flame. For me, like I said, it took about a minute and a half for it to become lumpy and start forming harder, um, harder clumps in the mixture. At that point is when you want to, um, you, you need to turn it off, take it off the heat and mix it quickly and as well as you can um, to distribute the heat evenly. Once it becomes kind of crusty-ish and yellow on the outside, it's overcooked. And I don't know of any way to sort of resurrect that dough, but if it's just becoming kind of lumpy, don't worry about it. Keep mixing it off of the heat, and as soon as you're able to work it with your hands, 
do. So just take some more Vaseline, baby oil, mineral oil, just slather your hands in it and start working at stretching the clay. Um, and that'll hold its shape really well. You can store that in the fridge to prevent it from drying out in a plastic bag uh, or in a sealed container. Otherwise, it will dry and you don't need to bake it. That clay will keep its shape well, make jewelry with it, make sculptures with it, ornaments, and have a blast.